This is your constituency. Two and a half years ago, you were elected here, and shortly afterwards, sanctions were lifted, and Myanmar, Burma's isolation from the rest of the world came to an end. Now that reforms seem to have stalled, do you regret that decision to join Parliament? No. No, because uh, I didn't join Parliament because I expected something from it, but I thought it would give us an opportunity to contribute something towards the development of the country. And also, of course, uh, if you believe in democracy, you do have to try to do your best to strengthen the legislature. And how successful do you think that's been? It, it's been a struggle at times, hasn't it? I think life is a struggle. I think it's always a struggle. Uh, I'm, I'm reasonably satisfied with what we've managed to achieve in the legislature, uh, taking into consideration the fact that we're only 46 out of more than 600 MPs, and we haven't done too badly. The Constitution still bars you from becoming president here, with less than a year to go before the general election. Is the dream of becoming president over for you? First of all, that's not my dream. My dream is of the country, the kind of country I would like to see. That's what I dream of, not about, about uh, sitting in a presidential suite or anything like that. And in any case, I, I always say that you should never say you've lost a battle until you've actually fought it to the best of your ability. So you're not ruling out the possibility that no, some sort of deal it, it could be done? it doesn't worry me. The, I don't like to think of it as a deal. What I like to think of is that uh, the people's right to choose the president they want is sacrosanct. And this is what we're working towards. It's not about my becoming president or anybody else becoming president, but about the people being in a position to choose whichever person they might wish to choose. It may be me, it may be somebody else. You've talked before about the reform process here being stalled. How do you go about persuading the Burmese army to allow more change to take place? It's not just me, it's the people who will have to persuade them. And I think the influence of the people is something that you should, you cannot ignore. Uh, people uh, tend to think that under dictatorships, the ordinary public have no power at all, no influence. Uh, this is true at a certain level, but I think the power of the people is something you can never make away with because they're there and they're very much in the majority. And if, if you start some kind of reform, however limited, uh, you give the people a chance to air their views and that in itself is great progress. Are you still hopeful that talks between senior political leaders here might deliver constitutional change? Well, I've always said that I don't believe in hope, I only believe in work. You try to achieve what you think uh, you should try to achieve through hard work, not just by hoping. And uh, but. I think I'll have to divide up your question to two parts because you were saying, did I hope and no, I don't hope I work for it. But you said, did I hope that uh, talks between senior level, uh, senior uh, leaders would result in some sort of resolution? Yes, I do believe that. If we really manage to get to the point of opening meaningful negotiations, I'm sure they could, there would be a lot of progress. I have no doubt about that whatsoever. But do you think that the president here is sincere about those talks the, and, and the other Well, election. at the moment, the President does not show any enthusiasm for the kind of negotiations that we want. But that doesn't mean it's the end of the story. It's, he's not the only one who can decide whether or not we go for negotiations. In the end, it's the people who will decide.